It's nice to have you join us on Nationwide this Thursday. Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Hawa Salihu Adana. You can follow this news broadcast live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and on our YouTube channel, NTA News Online. You can also visit our Twitter handle at NTA News Now and our Facebook page, NTA Network News, as well as Instagram, NTA Network, for updates. Our starting point today is the National Assembly from where the House of Representatives has, in line with the policy of ease of doing business, commenced legislative consideration to enhance performance of the capital market. A bill to establish Chartered Institute of Securities and Investment aimed at boosting investor confidence has passed second reading. The bill seeks to, among other things, expand the scope of the charter and enable audit of financial transactions. The old act was enacted 30 years ago. Now to the oil and gas sector where the designated 48 NNPC petrol stations are working round the clock to ensure uninterrupted access of petrol by motorists in Abuja and its environs. Lydia Samson, however, reports that only few motorists are taking advantage of this unique opportunity. To some of the stations indicates that the process is seamless with few motorists. It is 12 a.m. Later, it is for motorists here taking advantage of the 24 hours of service. They agree is a unique way of accessing petrol without having to wait. Since last year, September, we have having problem of fuel issue buying fuel. But I thank God this evening, as I just enter, we just decided to just step out and look for fuel, and, and I'm and I'm amazed that NNPC is actually selling fuel by this time. And we got here, and there's no queue, nobody, and we just got in man that it's nice, it's nice. I'm really impressed by this. You can see everywhere is empty now. The, there is no more queue again. People are getting the products, and it's available. So they are getting the product as much as they want. Uh, since we are operating 24 hours, you can come in anytime you like. If you don't want to come in the daytime, you can come in at night and pick your products. The tour of petrol stations by journalists went on till 3 a.m. And most stations visited had good reports of motorists applauding the 24 hours window. I think um, this is uh, quite commendable and impressive because um, unlike other times where at this time I wasn't expected to get fuel. But surprisingly, for days now, I've been getting fuel, um, say, any time I drive into this station, I get, at least I've gotten fuel here for the past um, three or four days consecutively. Some couple of days or weeks ago, it has been very challenging, but it's easy now. And uh, I, I, I think uh, the situation is getting better. It tells me that uh, the leadership of NMPC is working very hard. Some of the petrol stations, though the stations were open and waiting to serve, but no vehicle showed up. They, however, say the 24-hour service is mandatory as part of collaboration with the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited to mitigate queues which are already giving way. The motorists applauded the NMPC Limited for the 24-hour service in the designated petrol stations as well as massive distribution of products across the country. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Still staying with the oil and gas sector, the Nigerian midstream and downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority has shut down an illegal gas plant in Ota Ogun State for operating within a densely populated area. This was a fallout of a surveillance operation by the authority in Ota area of the state. Let's now join Yemi Dalemu for the details. The gas plant was situated in a residential area along Awolowo Street in Ota. Officials of the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority say, despite several warnings to owners of the illegal gas plant to relocate the plant from the neighborhood to a safer place, it declined and continued operating the business, not minding the danger involved. 
following the refusal of the owner to comply with the precise safety standards. The regulatory body not only shut down the gas plant, but also uprooted the 5,000 kilogram gas tank with contents and took it to its office in Abelkota, despite the resistance by the gas manager, who claimed that they possessed necessary documents for operation. Head of operations, Nigerian Upstream Regulatory Agency, Ogun State, Oluwa Femi Adebowale says the authority will continue to clamp down on illegal gas plants to ensure a safe environment for all. We have sat all of them, notice. Unfortunately, they've tampered with our seed, which is against even the law. They have the audacity, the, you know, to even remove the seed and continue selling, you know, and that is an offense on its own, you know. So that's the reason why we have got this extent of forcefully confiscating the storage tank. He advised others having similar illegal LPG facilities to do the needful or be sanctioned in Abelkuta, Yemidalimo, NT News. To other matters now, the Nigerian military, through its kinetic operations, will continue to eliminate terrorists except they surrender. The Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Bernard Onyeku, reaffirmed the military's position at a news conference in Abuja. Another Thursday, time to give account, and the Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Bernard Onyeku, is here again. Top on the success list is the troops' engagement of ISOP fighters in several locations, including the Mandara Mountains in the northeast. It is a similar tale in the fight against bandits in the northwest, but efforts were dampened by Tuesday's attack on the deputy governor of Kebbi State and his entourage. Notably, own troops during robust clearance operation engaged Islamic State West African terrorists at the Mandara Mountains, Antibokti Triangle. During the encounter, 10 terrorists were neutralized. The troops recovered four anti-aircraft guns, over 2,000 rounds of 12.67 millimeter ammunition, 10 bicycles, one unexploded improvised explosive device. Referring to a recent documentary in which a bandit kingpin, Belo Turji, justified why he went into banditry, Major General Onyeko says it is not the role of the armed forces to negotiate a truce. We are not in the business of negotiating peace with uh, bandits or terrorists. Our business is to take them out. At the end of the day, the military continues to balance between its kinetic and non-kinetic approaches in curbing security challenges. Still on security, multi-sectoral approach and building local capacity to respond to emerging crises in West Africa-dominated discussions at the first West Africa Peace and Security Innovation Forum. President ECOWAS Commission emphasized more strategic regional engagement in mapping out effective responses to challenges Joseph Hussain reports that the two-day virtual meeting is organized by the ECOWAS Commission. Our region has Peace and security of any nation as seen. The Nigeria Governors Forum is strengthening support with frontline organization in containing unrest that threaten the corporate existence of the country. The collaboration came to the fore during a multi-sectorial engagement on peace and inclusive security in Nigeria. Abubakar Usman Akwanga has that. Negotiable, and its sovereignty should not be left in the hands of those who compromise the law. This is what the Nigerian Governors Forum stands to defend with support from Center for Democratic Development and the British High Commission. The forum supports any effort to create a more inclusive and collaborative platform to mobilize an immediate and comprehensive national response to our country's security challenges. We talked based in the spirit of partnership and we discussed strengthening our cooperation in a wide range of areas, including, for example, on policing, on 
maritime security, various other areas as well. At the panel to forge security discussion, state actors shared experiences on the nature of Nigerian crisis and ways to tackle its consequences through effective synergy. We are engaged in research to discover what are the real dynamics of these uh, insecurity. We are willing and we are open to deepen this level of collaboration and to see how we can provide, you know, uh, stakeholder intervention at the highest level of government. The expectations for these like minds is to devise ways of developing a roadmap towards ending avoidable carnage and entrenching an era of stability and national cohesion. In Abuja, Abubakar Akwanga, NT News. And it's time to head to Lagos, where Hingino is on standby with more reports on Nationwide. It's over to you. Thank you, Hawa. Why the Federal Operations Unit Zone A of the Nigeria Customs Service is aggressively confronting smuggling activities is due to the simple reason that the illicit trade is the propelling factor for the multiplication of other vices apart from threatening national economy. This battle, the acting controller of the unit, Hussein Ejubunu, noted will be won if information sharing is prioritized. He was speaking at the display of seizures in Lagos, which also included more than 30,000 liters of petrol. Michael Olale reports. While Nigerians were sweating it out to get just a drop of petrol, smugglers were busy exporting the little in circulation. These 36,575 liters are parts of what the Federal Operations Unit Zone A of the Nigeria Customs Service could intercept. But the worry here transcends the smuggling of the commodity, but the huge loss is incurred by government at a time payment of subsidy is becoming challenging. We will set up proper anti bunkery units within the Zone A of FOU. That they, they will not do any other job aside tracing fuel smugglers. The customs has long ushered the fuel publicly, and together with the sum of money accrued from the transfer of value, recoveries of low transfer and wrong classification, generated close to 80 million naira in revenue between 3rd and 28th February 2022. This police truck was equally intercepted at Ibesi in Ogu State with more than 400 bags of foreign rice, but the driver is at large. This, however, is just a fraction of the close to 7,000 bags of foreign rice seized within the period under review. In contrast to January 2022, there seems to be a downward trend in the smuggling of rice, but increase in the number of goods and the importation methods employed by smugglers are generating new surveillance approach. With the effort of my officers, in ensuring that all the routes and all the corners are properly policed. So it brought that reduction from 9,000 to 6,000. 52 used fridges and 175 pieces of compressors, including used tires and clothing, put the duty paid value of goods seized within February close to 590 million naira. Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. There is more to life behind the bars, aside developing the capacity of inmates to be beneficial to the society if freedom eventually comes, there is also a platform for showcasing talents. Kendi Adebisi recently visited the female section of the Nigerian Correctional Service Kirikiri in Lagos where inmates participated in a beauty pageant. This scenario truly reflects the mood of this year's International Women's Day which is breaking the bias. The International Women's Day 2022 may have come and gone, but women are still being celebrated around the world. This year's team, Breaking the Bias, is indeed apt for this women at the female section of the Nigerian Correctional Center, Kirikiri, Papa, Lagos. Despite finding themselves in such circumstance, they are not deterred, insisting to make the best of their situation. Keep on blessing me. Keep on blessing me. 
correctional center and what have you, unlike when it was called prison. So that is to tell you that our philosophy has changed. Of training in terms of education and vocational skills, so that when they leave this place, they become a better person when they get to the society. Officer in charge of the female section of the center, Deputy Controller of Prisons, Elise Ependu, says one of the many ways to bring reform to the women here is lifting their spirit and assuring them there is more to life without judging, which is the basis of the introduction of the first beauty pageant. I don't judge them. I accept them the way they are. I love them passionately. And uh, surprisingly, we have this bond and we're like a family. The ladies took turns on the walkway to display their beauty, talent, and of course, their intellect. At the end of a keenly contested pageant, a winner emerged. There were other side attractions to make the day glamorous. Thank you, Candy. Time now to head to Just, where Felicia is set to bring us stories from that zone after this break. But don't forget, you can follow this news broadcast live on our website. <laughs> watching nationwide on the network service of the LTE. Welcome to JESS. The new Director General of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, NIP School, Professor Ayo Omotayo, has assured of the Institute's commitment to working more closely with Plateau government towards the realization of strategic goals for national development. This was when the Director General visited Governor Simon Lalong at the government house, Joss. Priscilla Grumman reports. The new Director General of NIPS, Professor Ayo Omotayo, told Governor Lalong that his visit is to familiarize with government and also consolidate on the long-standing synergy between the government and the institute. He appreciates Governor Lalong for his support to the institute, saying NIPS as a strategic think tank will continue to formulate policies that will be beneficial to the nation. I'm here to just let you know that there's a new DJ in the, on the plateau and that that DG is willing to cooperate to the most extent possible with the governor to ensure that NIPS play roles that are expected of it in Nigeria and to affect our immediate community beyond what we have done in the past. Governor Simon Lalong assures the new director general of his support to the success of NIPS programs. The progress of that institution is the progress of Plateau State. This year, I was very happy when your team came. You told us that the focus of this year is on local governments. That is at local government level. I was so excited. I said that has been our focus to move governors, move authority back to the grassroots. In Joss, Priscilla Grumnan, NTA News. That's the much we can take from Joss. Hawa is back to you in Abuja. Thank you very much. And back in Abuja, staff of NTA headquarters here in Abuja are beneficiaries of a free kidney counseling screening and testing organized by the Wuse District Hospital, Abuja. Joseph Hussain reports that the exercise is part of activities marking the 2022 World Kidney Day. A busy schedule may not allow a highly engaged staff like that of the Nigerian Television Authority to carry out routine medical checkup that will help early detection of disease for prevention. With this year's World Kidney Day focusing on bridging gaps to improve kidney health, the Wusa District Hospital, Abuja, takes the awareness campaign to the doorsteps of NTA. Our kind of lifestyle, we usually don't have time for our bodies. So I was like, okay, passing through all the stages, I was kind of agitated, but I'm so happy 
it came out positive. And from the counseling, I've been advised, you know, to live a more positive lifestyle, not just for now, but for the future. The kidney is a vital organ that filters blood and helps in passing out waste as urine. Its inability to function effectively can lead to health complications and even death. For health is wealth, like they said, health is wealth. So anywhere I see any medical screening, I don't hesitate to join. One out of every adult worldwide and over 20 million Nigerians are said to have kidney-related diseases. And these NTA staff don't want to be counted among. In Abuja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. Thank you, Joseph. And joining me here in the studio to talk more on this World Kidney Day today is uh, Dr. Sali Ibrahim Kwaifa. He's a chief consultant, physician, and nephrologist at the Wuse District Hospital, Abuja. You're welcome to Nationwide. Thank you. It's World Kidney Day. How serious will you say the issue of kidney disease is in the world and particularly in Nigeria? Yeah. Um, Chronic kidney disease has attained an epidemic proportion worldwide, mm -hmm. and more so in Africa and Nigeria in particular. Currently, worldwide, we have about 850 million people suffering from chronic kidney disease. While in Nigeria, it's an estimate only estimated that about 20 million people are going about with daily activities with chronic kidney disease. About 20 million people. What we see in the hospital is just the tip of an iceberg. It's the people that have symptoms and are sick that we see. And uh, from small personal experience in my hospital, there was a time that more than 50% of my medical admission in the hospital are all having chronic kidney disease. So it's quite uh, challenging and it's quite serious. Let's go down to what may look mundane or the obvious. What is responsible for these alarming cases that we see? Yeah, there are so many, there are so many factors, multiple of factors. Number one, we have an increased incidence of hypertension, high blood pressure. Number two, we have increased incidence of diabetes, that's a sugar-related uh, sugar disease. And number three, we have increased incidence of use of herbal, herbal medications, that's uh, herbal concoctions. Okay. Number four, we have increased incidence of drug abuse, especially painkillers. And then we have also increased prevalence of certain infections, like the infections that affect the kidney. So in particular, like HIV infection, hepatitis B virus infection, hepatitis C infection. Primarily, they affect the liver, B and C, but they also affect the kidneys, and they cause significant amount of kidney disease. And then there's increased awareness. You know, through campaigns, people are aware. So now we diagnose more commonly because people otherwise that they don't go for medical checkup, now they do subject themselves for medical checkup. So therefore, we are likelihood to pick them. So these are some of the factors. You, you, you just talked about increased awareness, and there's something that is so common right now, I guess, all over the world, but maybe more in Nigeria. You mentioned one of the causes to be increase in the intake of herbal concussions and medicine. Yes. What do we do about this? It's the adverts are everywhere on social media, everywhere. Yes, there is a small study done in University of Illinois National Hospital that they found out that about 60% of causes of acute renal failure could be attributed to herbal medications. Could be attributed or is it responsible. Herbal okay. medications are responsible. Okay. So and when you have acute kidney disease or kidney failure, it's not all of it that get cured or reversible. Some will go silently to chronic. So this alone adds to the burden of chronic kidney disease or kidney failure we see in our environment. What we need to do is to educate our people. You know, this our herbal remedies or concussion, most of them they are not refined. So we don't know actually what and what they contain. And the dosages also matters because nobody knows what it contains. Therefore, the dosage is just epitherapy. Hmm. So go and take three cups, or one gallon yeah. every day. So and we don't want to quit. It may contain something that is beneficial, but it contains a lot, a lot of other things that are toxic to the body, other to the kidneys in particular. Okay, I'm going to come down to your hospital in particular, we say, I know we've seen cases of um, kidney patients that you normally, we, we, we practically have to go cap in and begging for arms to, you know, go for implants, transplant or whatever. What is being done in your hospital to assist patients that are down with this? You see, what is being done in the hospital actually mm -hmm. 
to help the patients is to provide some form of treatment that the patient can easily assess. So Wusa Hospital is one of the one of the two. In fact, we're having the largest number of dialysis machines in Wusa Hospital in FCT. So these services are available. So patients can assess it as well as any other patient within Abuja that needs such services can come and assess it at in what you reduce or discounted rate. So this is what we do. And then also we screen people and they educate them. Because the most important thing is when you have a kidney disease, it's not the it's not the end of life. You can live well with the kidney disease. Okay. Like this year's theme is kidney health for all. Okay. So we all need to know what kidney does, that the function of the kidney, and how to keep it healthy so that we enjoy a better quality of life. Thank you very much. But before you go, what would be your last word? My last word is, mm. I said, we want to bridge the gap in education. What we discovered, mm. that there's a lot of gap between what we know as expert and what the public knows about the kidneys. If you ask a lot of people, what does the kidney do? They don't know. They don't know. That's so true. if you don't know how your organ functions and how to protect it, mm -hmm. there will be a doubting tax now for you even to help yourself. That's true. So what I advise, last word, everybody, adult, male and female, should go for screening, that testing, at least once a year. Okay. At least once a year. If you don't have any risk factor, if you have this factor like hypertension, diabetes, or other element, mm -hmm. then you go twice a year. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Know your box. That's my acronyms. Know your box. B U S C uh, C S box. B U C X. Okay. Blood pressure, yeah. urine, urine, sugar level, and then creatinine. Okay. That's what you need to do. Thank you so much, Doctor Sali Ibrahim Kwaifa, Thank you. Uh, Chief Consultant Physician and Nephrologist at the Wuse District. Hospital Abuja. We appreciate your coming on Nationwide today. Thank you. Thank you. And moving on now to politics, the acting chairman, Ketika Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Governor Abubakar Bello of Niger State, has inaugurated chairman and secretaries of sub-national convention committees for smooth and effective planning of the upcoming national convention of the party to hold on the 26th of March 2022. Governor Abubakar Bello says the heads of the subcommittee were selected based on their track records and experience to deliver. It is all hands on deck to ensure success of the forthcoming APC National Convention by starting of these sub-national convention committees and now inaugurating the chairman and secretaries to take the lead. The acting chairman Caretaker Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, Governor Abubakar Bello of Niger State is expecting nothing but a smooth run to success. Convention of members and secretaries of the committee is in consideration of track records, experience, and loyalty to the party. It is expected that they exhibit these qualities and to ensure the success of the convention. Governor of Kiti State, Kayode Fayemi, on behalf of members of the subcommittees, expressed commitment to bring their experience and wisdom to bear as they look forward to strengthen the party to maintain its leadership position in the country. It is clearly one that we want to commit all our strength and wisdom to accomplish so that our party can be properly positioned. This party should as a matter of urgency to respect the rule of law and obey the court judgments and orders where they exist. And when this is done, it will also give everyone a sense of belonging. The subcommittee's chairman are expected to coordinate selection of people that will make up the remaining members and submit to the party secretariat. In Abuja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. And closely linked to this is the judiciary, where the Ebonyi State Governor David Umai has appealed the judgment of the Federal High Court that ordered him and his deputy to vacate their offices. The matter, based on eight grounds of appeal, is questioning the entire judgment of the trial court. Governor Umai, who through his counsel, cited various authorities to buttress its grounds of appeal, particularly relies on the recent Federal High Court Gusso's decision in the case of the Zamfara state governor, Bello Matawali, which ruled that the governor 
committed no constitutional infraction in his defection from the PDP to APC. In the appeal, the governor and his deputy are seeking an order of the appellant court to set aside the decision of the trial court and a telephone interview with the counsel to the appellants Chukuma Machukumi SAN confirmed to NTA News that an appeal to that effect has been filed. Machukume SAN also pointed out that the appellants have equally filed a stay of execution of the judgment. Meanwhile, the Eboin State Governor Chief David Umayi has restated his confidence in the Nigerian judiciary, stressing that he never disparaged the system. Governor Umayi said this while hosting the Forum of Eboin Founding Fathers, led by former Governor Martin Eleche, at his office in Abakeleke. Joining his sack from office by the Federal High Court Abuja for the campaign from the People's Democratic Party PDP to all Progressive Congress APC, Chief Omai has continued to receive solidarity from the people, appreciating Eboin founding fathers who visited him for the same papers. Omar, he said that he was not perturbed for any reason. He, however, debunked the allegation that he was castigating the judiciary. There is a judgment that is subsisting here in a point state that says I can't vacate my office. There is a new judgment that says I should vacate my office. Why I appeal that of the one that says I should vacate my office, I will obey the one that says I will not vacate my office. I still have confidence in the judiciary. And I'm happy that uh, when I defected was the most trying period in Southeast. And I said, no, we need to move Southeast to the center and work with our brothers. While assuring Chief Umahi of their unflinching support, the leader of the forum and immediate past governor of the state, Chief Martin Eleche, advised him to seek legal redress. Come to say we are with you. What happened to you happened to all of us. But let us in Abakaliki, Chika Ukuri, NTA News. And promoting participatory development and good governance is the focus of the Trade Union Congress Political Roundtable, expected to guarantee the actualization of interests and aspirations of Nigerian citizens. One of the ways to achieve that is for workers to be sensitized to participate in leadership recruitment processes that would enthrone good governance through the 2023 general elections and beyond. This, the Trade Union Congress says, has become necessary to ensure transparent leadership is achieved at all levels of government. It has become very unsafe to consistently allow politicians to take decisions on issues affecting the social economic well-being of workers and by extension the Nigerian masses. Certainly, active, principled, focused and resilient participation in the political and the electoral process is the starting point of bringing about good democratic governance that can more appropriately be the framework for addressing the primary and the objective interests of the Nigerian workers in contemporary Nigeria. All the speakers are of the opinion that Nigerian workers must take advantage of the liberal democracy and not leave decision to govern to the whims and caprices of politicians who are not committed to good governance. And our Medjugorje Network Center is next on our lineup and Mohammed is our guide. Hello Mohammed. Thank you very much, Hawa, for joining Medjugorje on Nationwide. Minister of State for Education, Chukwu Emeka Mwajuba, says standardizing formal and informal system of education is a task that must be accomplished for the educational viability of Nigeria. This came up during the minister's two-day official engagement in Medjugorje, the Borneo state capital. Abokar Musa reports. On arrival in Medjugorje, the Minister of State for Education, Chukwe Emeka Mwajuba, alongside National Coordinator of Better Education Service Delivery for All, Aminabuba Haruna, 
who were received by the Borno State Commissioner of Education, among other principal officers, inspected various sections of Borno State Vocational Enterprise Institute before proceeding to Mafa Local Government Sangaya Community School. The minister interacted extensively with the management and learners at the school, especially on issues affecting their operations, informing them of federal government's resolve to fix formal and informal system of education across Nigeria. Chukwemeka Mwajuba also extended the on-the-spot assessment to Goni Zarami Sangaya School, Mafoni, Yemi Oshimbajo Primary School, Bolori, Garbabuzu Sangaya School, Bolori, as well as Muhammad Buhari Institution for Orphans, where he expressed satisfaction with the monitoring and evaluation carried out so far. We've looked at what they are doing with um, inclusive training. For instance, uh, the work they are doing with not just necessarily providing formal education, but also having some skill sets, which is an integrated system, which Borno State being peculiarly challenged because many of the children who should be in different stages of classes are otherwise, you know, at the moment had exceeded those classes. So you want to re-equip them with skills. The idea behind standardizing formal and informal education is an initiative of the federal government being carried out by BESDA with the support of benefiting states. In Maiduguri, Abubakar Musa, NT News. The resilience of women in Borno State over the years of insurgency has been described as worth celebrating this year's International Women's Day, despite the daunting challenges. These were the views of stakeholders at an event marking 2022 International Women's Day held at Government House Maiduguri. Yagun Subukar reports. This year's International Women's Day with the theme Gender Equality Today for a Sustainable Tomorrow is celebrated with mixed feelings as women's agitation for gender equality to be passed into law has been rejected by the National Assembly. You could read from their faces how determined these women, beautifully dressed in purple, are to break the bias of gender inequality. Wife of Borno State Governor Dr. Fomata Babakana Umaru Zulum, while commending efforts of women in the state, called for urgent steps to change the narrative of discrimination against women. A bill to allow women become an indigent of her husband's state after five years of marriage, the bill was rejected. Women must be made, allowed to occupy spaces in governance. Representatives from UNICEF, UN Women, among other speakers, called for action among stakeholders to influence the change agitated for by women in terms of gender equality. Students from various institutions showcase their talents through debates and discussions, as well as musical entertainment, celebrating Governor Zulum for inclusion of women in governance. Despite outcry by women across the country yearning for gender equality, women folk in Borno State have every cause to celebrate this year's International Women's Day, especially for their resilience in over a decade-long insurgency and other forms of abuses. In Medjugorje, Yagum Subukar, NTA News. Many thanks, Yagum Su, whose report concludes contribution of Medjugorje on Nationwide, which will continue now. Thanks for rejoining us. It's Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Onyema, has confirmed that Nigeria is almost through with the evacuation of her citizens caught up in the raging Russia-Ukraine war. He said that this when he visited the KB State, visited KB State for an update on the massive evacuation exercise embarked upon by the federal government. Usman Abdullahi Shehu takes it from here. The affairs minister was in the state being one of those with the highest number of students in Ukraine, assured that their children studying in Ukraine are absolutely safe. He said since President Muhammadu Buhari's evacuation approval, efforts have been geared towards safeguarding the lives of Nigerians living in the war-torn country, adding that last batch of the affected students are being transported to safety. The, this uh, war in Russia and, uh, and Ukraine, it has been a very trying and difficult time for the students uh, in those countries who have been trapped. 
The minister equally sympathized with the government and the people of the state over the incessant banditry. Governor Abu Bakr Atikubawudu represented applauded the prompt response of the federal government in evacuating citizens caught in the middle of the war back to Nigeria. He acknowledged the commitment of the federal government in securing the lives and property of the people living in banditry prone areas and the country at large. You also, on behalf of the government and the people of the state, wish you some. Mr. President, who sent me down to Kelly to uh, share the grief with us and also the following uh, missions. The minister had earlier paid a visit to the Emir of Gondu, Dr. Muhammad Ilya Subashar, in his palace. Mon Abdullahi Shehu, NTA News. Achieving equality for women judges in terms of representation at all levels of the judiciary and on policymaking judicial councils inform the United Nations Declaration of March 10th every year as International Day of Women Judges. The inclusion of gender perspective is essential to the legitimacy of the judiciary. It is also to remind world leaders and those in positions of authority to evolve measures to promote gender balance in the administration of justice. Austin Nanyebe takes a look at this special day. Equality in the judiciary has been historically uneven, resulting in male domination at the various levels of the justice system. The situation not peculiar to Africa, but also in other jurisdictions. It is an attempt to remedy the situation that the acceptance of a new United Nations General Assembly resolution marking 10th of March every year as the International Day of Women Judges passed the resolution drafted by the state of Qatar to reverse gender inequalities in the judiciary. Statistics indicate that women judges at the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom and the United States account for less than 30 percent. In Nigeria, the situation is not so bad as the present administration and previous ones had offered a level playing ground for qualified women resulting in attainment of high positions in the sector like judges or superior court of records, heads of courts, judiciary institutions and other appointments. Ten years ago, 15 years ago, we would not as in have this number. We are not where we are yet, but at least we are working towards where we want to be. Hopefully, in the next 10 years, when we are having a celebration like this, we would almost be having 50-50, if not more women in the judiciary. It's not like we are saying that the standards should be low, but what we are saying is that we should be, if we are, if we are good enough, why would you want to limit us? You should give us like the same opportunities with the men. If a woman is strong, a woman is well educated, she's well equipped for a particular position. Why limit her just by the mere fact that she's a woman? And this is the justice system that we are talking about. Legal experts said the presence of women judges in the justice sector is not only right, but also for the attainment of a more just rule of law. They argue that considerations that would not have been taken into account in their absence are effectively dealt with through enhanced adjudication, bringing to bear their wealth of experiences. We have more women, like in the judiciary, as the punishment for rape will be more severe because a woman understands the pain of another woman. You know, may, men mostly, once you, uh, a man notices that it's a rape case, most times they try to blame the woman, how were you dressed? The celebration of the Women Judges Day is therefore significant in motivating and sensitizing the next generation of women judges and advocates to participate actively at all levels of decision making to make the society a better place. In Abuja, Austin Anyebe, NT News. And we are not done with women yet as we directing methods to effectively advance justice for survivors of sexual based violence was at the center of discourse at a media training in Abuja in commemoration of the International Women's Day. Momso Damien Dati completes that. These are practitioners from diverse media organizations. Here, deeper understanding is given to intricate issues around sexual and gender-based violence and its reportage to protect survivors while shaming perpetrators. We want to bring, build the capacity of the media to see themselves as critical actors in the uh, uh, efforts to eradicate violence against women and girls. Parts of the society are encouraged to offer them help 
not stigmatizing them. The workshop emphasized the necessity for reporters to act their roles as leaders to rid the society of vices like sexual gender-based violence. It helps one to understand, you know, what to look out for, um, the areas that we should really uh, hammer on when we're doing our reports, how to report minors in these um, cases. It's important that we put our humanity there. I mean, these people are not just numbers. These people are not just victims. We call them survivors. You know, and whenever we report this as journalists, it's important that we ensure that we put that humanity. Let's not contribute to their trauma, please. You know, ship our perspective on what gender-based violence is and how we can help in propagandizing the story to the society. The two-day training was organized by Baobab for Women's Human Rights Organization in commemoration of 2022 International Women's Day in Abuja, Momsa Jamin Ati, NTN News. And sports is next. I